then I will 100% get a legendary, as you can see. I'm going to open all 100 of these. Comment down below how many legendaries I'm going to get. All right, so hello gamers. A while ago, I made a video about how to get legendaries or melees in Phantom Forces. Now, this video is, is, is it did pretty good. The thing about it is that a lot of stuff has changed since I made that video. So I wanted to make a different and new and improved guide on how to get melees and legendaries and Phantom Forces. So make sure to subscribe if you're new. Check down below if you're subscribed. Like the video and watch until the end. And I'll explain everything on how to get a ton of very nice melees. As you can see, I have quite a few melees. And yes, a lot of these are from when Silas started giving me a lot of credits. But before that, I had pretty much every melee and I had never bought any credits. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you start actually unlocking melee is go into the game and get about like two to three K credits. You can have less, you can have more. Certainly you can have more. The more you have, the better, but you're going to want to have at least a couple of thousand. And the reason for that is basically if you buy one case and you don't get a good skin, you're just going to lose all your money and not be able to buy any more. But if you buy like a hundred cases, you're probably going to average out and get you know about all of your money back, which means that you're going to be able to continuously use this method to get all of the legendaries. And I was able to to use this method and not even spend that much money of the 40k credits that I had and end up getting pretty much every melee in the entire game. Like it was kind of crazy how well this method started working once I figured out, you know, how the legendary system works. But yeah, I'm just going to despawn and I'm going to show you guys because the first thing you need to realize is that cases do not have specific melees. This is not CSGO. Even CSGO I don't think has that. But yes, you can get every melee from every case and it doesn't matter which one it is. You can also get melees that you would normally unlock by a rank on Unlock, which is pretty nice because you don't have to pre-buy any of your melees except a few of them you're gonna have to pre-buy or get to that rank because certain melees such as the havoc blade i believe the classic knife you're not going to be able to get these from crates you're gonna have to pre-buy them if you want them which is kind of annoying so the first thing you're gonna want to know is which case to buy and i do recommend tier one cases because you can buy the most of them and have the highest chance of getting a melee because the higher tier cases don't necessarily have a higher chance of getting a melee and the chances of getting melees in this game are pretty interesting. So I'm going to buy like 75 of each of these. And as you can see, that was 3,750, which means it's going to be about 8,000 credits to get all the sort of case keys. So you're not going to really be able to buy all the keys and cases you need unless you have a lot of credits. And you're not going to need 75 cases, but 75 would be really nice. So I'll go over to my starter cases and you can roll single. That's pretty cool. And I just got a USAS. So that's actually pretty good because it's a rare skin. But also you can just roll all of your cases. And I got two legendaries there. So that cost me like a lot of money, but I got two legendaries, which is cool. Right after you unlock your skins, you can basically, if you want to sell all of these skins, like I have a ton of these type of skins, there's actually a way you can AFK sell all of your skins very quickly. You will need an auto clicker or you can do this manually as well. But basically you put your cursor here, right? And then you click here, here, here. And look, if I just keep clicking, I'm selling all of my skins and I don't have to move my cursor. Normally you'd have to do this and it would take forever, you know, but if you just find that area where you want to start selling and then you just put it here, you can sell all your skins very quickly and get all of your credits back. I'm adding this in later in post, but basically if you're going to be going for this, use an auto clicker. I'll just show you what an auto clicker does. Yeah. That's how fast I'm getting my money back as well. There are plenty of auto clickers that are not a virus. Go try to find one. That's not a virus. So basically you can buy a batch of starter cases or whichever case you want, but I do recommend starter cases and I'll explain why in just a second. And when you're done, you can sell all your skins that are not legendaries. You're probably wondering why I recommend starter cases. And basically starter cases are tier one cases and they are the lowest price. However, they have an interesting feature of having the gold skin and the gold skin is very good because it's one of two skins in the starter one area that is a customizable, which means you could make stuff like this with the gold skin. As you can see, I'm using gold. You can actually edit the skin skin, which is really nice and make it basically whatever you want. So that's why I really recommend you get the gold skin. Also, it doesn't have any kind of texture on it, which means it's the best for making force fields and making gold looking skins, glass looking skins. It's very helpful. The material case also has the smooth plastic skin, but I don't really recommend it. It's about the same. So next, I'm going to explain the odds because the odds in this game are very interesting and kind of different from every other game with case unboxing type stuff. Because as you can see, 55% for commons, 23% for uncommons, 10 
7% for rares, 8% for very rares, and 3.5% for legendary. Now if I roll, well now it went back to 1, 3, 10, 26, and 60. This is the normal odds, and as you can see, if I roll one, it goes up to 1.25 and 3.5. So every time you unlock a case and it doesn't have a very rare or a legendary, your odds of getting a legendary will go up by 0.25% and your odds of getting a very rare will go up by 0.5%. Now here's the dilemma, right? You'd think that it would just keep going up until you get a legendary and then restart, but it actually will restart at a very rare as well. So getting a very rare is kind of annoying. However, the very rares will sell for a lot more, especially in this case where it's a customizable because customizables will also be more expensive than just a normal very rare skin. So if I roll again, it will go up to 1.5. I roll again and I keep rolling until I can get a legendary. So up to 2.5. I'm getting uncommons and getting uncommons if you have a tier one case is actually not too bad. If you look at the uncommon skins I'm getting from this case, it's 120, which is almost getting my money back. But you're going to want to get rares, very rares, or definitely legendaries. And as you can see, uncommon customizables are 180. However, you can only get uncommon customizables usually from higher tier cases. Now, rares are 270, which means I'm almost doubling the money that I'm spending on the case and the key. And if you get a very rare, that's 500, which is really good because you're going to get about triple. So if you're getting a lot of very rares, yes, it's not getting a legendary, which is kind of annoying, but you have more cases to unbox if you're getting more very rares. You're going to be losing quite a bit of credits if you get something like this. However, if you're selling all your skins, you might be able to break even basically every time and just continue to do this. This time I got three very rares and two rares, which is pretty good. I didn't get any legendaries, but now I can resell all of my skins. Something very interesting that you need to remember is that if you put your skin on your melee and then sell the skin, you will keep the skin on your gun. You can't change it, but if it's not a customizable one, that's completely fine. And you get a lot of money for selling your legendaries. So I sold that skin, right? But I still have the ice pick skin. And as you can see, I don't have the skin anymore. So if I took off the skin or switched the skin to something else, I would no longer be able to change it back, which is kind of annoying. If you have a customizable, do not sell your customizable. So that way you can keep changing it whenever you want to. But if you have a non-customizable, it looks good on your melee, change it to that skin and then just sell the skin. Just remember to not change it. Otherwise it'll be pretty bad. Ooh, come on. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, I have cases in my inventory, so should I buy keys for those cases? The answer is just straight up no. Do not do that because look, three keys is 1,200. That's a lot of money. So I got X95 Clover Camo, and if I go to here, you can see it's $45. That's not really that great considering a key was 400. So you might get a better skin, but if you're going for melees, you do not want to buy these higher tier cases. Even if you already have the case or the key in your inventory, I should also mention trade-ups. Now trade-ups are kind of interesting because if you have a ton of gold skins, you could sell them or you could go for a trade-up. So if I put a couple of my duplicates, then I will 100% get a legendary as you can see now trade-ups are a great way to get a ton of legendaries if you've already bought a ton of cases because i can just keep getting more and more legendaries i don't want to save my gold skins because i like them what you can also do is just go into here and just put them all in there and then you can get a very rare which is really cool so i'll trade in all these rares that are not customizable and i'll get a very rare I got the freaking... I spent so much money on that skin and like a second one. Are you serious? Access is basically how you make the op Asimov on the op, but that's funny. You can trade up from an uncommon to a rare, but since rares are kind of trash anyway, I don't really recommend them. And you can trade up from a common to an uncommon, and that is not necessary. Like... Oh, wow. MP 1911, red clay camo. So really not that necessary. You don't really do that. Yeah, you can keep trading up and then go up to uncommons and commons. But keep in mind, it takes six to trade up, which means you're going to have a lot less skins by the time you get to the top. I'm going to open all 100 of these. Comment down below how many legendaries I'm going to get. Let's see. I got one. Here's the thing about having a very rare customizable in your tier one. Now, if you end up getting a melee, there is a pretty good chance you're going to get a gold one. Like this time I got it on the sledgehammer and that's very cool because I could make a neon sledgehammer if I wanted to. I could also make a transparent sledgehammer like, okay, I like this. Look, you can't even see it. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do if you get the gold one. So that's why you're going to want to go for the starter one so you can maybe get a customizable. And if you use the material case, there's actually more skins in this one. So you have a worse chance of actually being able to get a very rare customizable. But anyways, gamers, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.